Folks, welcome back to News One Now TV One. We'll talk with Green Party presidential nominee, Dr. Jill Stein. So, uh, Dr. Stein, let's do with education. Um, when we talk about the education system, in many ways, uh, we've been trying to figure this thing out for forever. Uh, and we still have uh, segregation in our schools. Mm -hmm. One of the things that, and I'm a huge believer in school choice, African Americans, we actually polled African American parents, upwards of 80% said they believed in charter schools and, and believed also in vouchers. What is uh, your campaign's, uh, uh, view, what is your campaign view on that? And also, you also have, the, let me say this here, the only African American running mate, uh, Mayor Jamu uh, Baraka, who's your vice president of your running mate, so go right ahead. That's right. Yeah, so, you know, my feeling about it is that every child deserves an excellent education, and every child deserves a school system which is teaching to the whole student for lifetime learning, not just to a high stakes test, which in fact is not helpful to uh, challenged learners, to disadvantaged learners. So I really believe in enriched education. I believe we should be doing what our uh, so-called education leaders are doing for their kids. What they're doing for their kids is sending them to well-funded schools that have small they, classroom size. They have choice. Exactly. They do have choice and what they're looking for in particular is a well-funded school, a well-trained and well-paid teacher and for a very small classroom size and an enriched curriculum. They are not looking at high stakes testing. They are looking at curriculum that is filled with art and music and recreation and community community engagement in the in the country of Finland which has the best education system in the world this is exactly what they do and it's my feeling that Everybody not only needs choice, put it this way, everybody needs to have a great school to start with. Right now, we are squandering half of our discretionary budget is being spent on wars for oil and the so-called war on terror, which is not making us safer. It's actually encouraging more terror, fanning the flames of terror. That is half of our discretionary budget. It is almost half of your income taxes. In my view, we need a foreign policy based on uh, international law and human rights rights, not on regime change, and we need to be putting our dollars into true security here at home, ensuring that every community has a great school. And it's not only the education, because if kids are coming to school stressed, in poverty, not well nourished, they're not going to learn, no matter what kind of a great education system you give them, it's going to be very difficult for them to learn. So we're calling for actually the elimination of poverty through our Green New Deal jobs program. Mm -hmm. as a companion to an education system. What will it take for the Green Party to be what is described as a real third major party? Because, again, I, I've talked to a lot of African Americans who say, mm -hmm. I like what Dr. Stein is saying, I like what Barack is saying, but bottom line is, is I, for them, they're saying it's either Hillary Clinton or Donald Trump. And this is exactly what the system would like you to think, that you only have two choices. But in fact, America is very unhappy with those two choices and in fact is clamoring for something else. The majority of Americans do not like and do not trust either Hillary Clinton or Donald Trump and for reasons that we can well understand. The American people are clamoring for something else, yet we have largely not been covered up until now by major media. Yet my campaign has been coming up in the polls to four, five, six, even as high as 7% without coverage. We know that Donald Trump had a $2 billion worth of free media. Hillary Clinton had $1 billion. Bernie Sanders had half a billion. We've basically had zip, yet we're coming up because people are desperate for something else. You know, the track record of Hillary Clinton, though she may give you know, lip service to the important things. Her track record is not good for having supported the crime bill that opened the doors to mass incarceration, for having supported the dismantling of aid to, de to families with dependent children that removed the social safety net and threw at least another million children into poverty, took a half year off of the lifespan of your average uh, uh, woman dependent on, uh, on, on social supports. So, uh, you know, not to mentioned supporting Wall Street deregulation that led to the massive Wall Street crash, the loss of nine million jobs, the theft of five million homes, and who's gotten hit harder by all of this than the African-American community? We 
are in a realignment election right now. The Republicans are falling apart. The Democrats are moving to the right, trying to capture the Republican vote. And we've seen in Hillary's appointment of her transition director, you know, that he's kind of the lobbyist lobbyist. You mean, you mean John Podesta? Uh, no, actually, I'm talking about Ken Salazar. Gotcha. Ken Salazar, yes. former uh, interior secretary for, for the president. That's uh, right. La last question here for you before I, before I uh, go. Uh, and I think I got about 60 to 90 seconds left. Okay. And that is... When you look at the debates, yes, a criteria is established. Do you believe that, and I believe the criteria, you have to be polling at 15%. That's right, yes. Do you believe that that is grossly unfair? What do you believe? Should there, first of all, should there be a threshold for, for a national candidate? And if so, what do you think it should be? The threshold should be that the candidate has to be on the ballot for enough voters that they could actually win the election. So a real uh, practical choice. 40 states, 50 states? Well, uh, to win at least the majority of the Electoral College vote. So it depends on which states, but you know, it's basically a majority of the of voters is what it comes down to. If you're on the ballot for a majority of voters and you could potentially win the elections, voters not only have a right to vote, we have a right to know who our choices are and who we can vote for. That should be the fair standard. This Commission on Presidential Debates is basically the, you know, a private corporation run by the Democratic and Republican parties. That is not fair. That's not what democracy is about. Their purpose is to silence political opposition. We're saying go to Jill2016.com and join our campaign to open the debates. Let Let's let a democratic discussion move forward. Let's empower voters to make their choices, not to be told, given marching orders from the higher up saying, be good little boys and girls and keep doing what we're doing because what we're doing is not working for America and it's certainly not working for the African American community who's really first to get hit, hardest to get hit, and last to get a chance to recover. I'm here to be that candidate for every American, including disenfranchised Americans, African Americans, Americans so we can stand up for the promise of democracy and the just and sustainable future that should be delivered to every American. All right, Dr. Jill Stein, I sure appreciate it. Thanks a bunch. Great talking and, with uh, you. And we'll, we'll chat with you again as we move forward in the campaign. I look forward to it. Kickstart your day at 7 and get the news you need from the perspective you want. News One Now with Roland Martin, every weekday morning at 7 on TV One.